Thanks to CuriosityStream for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Hey, smart people, Joe here. What weighs more, a pound of feathers or a pound of steel? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to switch the video into metric. Much better. So what weighs more, a kilogram of feathers or a kilogram of steel? <laughs> You're too smart. You're right, that's a trick question. It all depends on where on earth you weigh them. Something's mass. A kilogram of feathers, a kilogram of steel, or you and me is constant everywhere in the universe. Because mass is a measure of how much stuff there is, all your atoms added together. But weight isn't a constant. It's the force gravity applies to all that stuff at one specific spot. So depending on the gravity where you are, your weight will be different. This makes sense if we think about being, say, on the moon, where your moon weight is about 16.5% your Earth weight because gravity is about 16.5% what it is on Earth. But the same thing is also true here. Things don't weigh the same everywhere on Earth. So, a question. Where on earth would you or feathers or steel weigh the most? And for that matter, where would you weigh the least? What makes this question so confusing is there's more than one definition of weight. Now, to most of us, weight's just the number you see when you step on the scale. A scale does measure weight, the force gravity puts on a mass, but the numbers on the scale in kilograms or pounds are not measures of weight. Officially, those are measures of mass. And like we just saw, mass and weight are different things. So unless your bathroom scale gives you an answer in Newtons, it's lying to you. Now, mass is the amount of stuff there is in you, and weight is how hard gravity is pulling on you and all your atoms. Most of the time, this difference doesn't matter, because if you weigh two things in the same place on the same scale, they're both under the same influence of gravity. But a kilogram of feathers on the North Pole weighs more than a kilogram of steel on the equator. And the reasons why are pretty weird. All of this would be easy to figure out if the Earth were a perfectly smooth, non-rotating sphere floating alone in space, nice and uniform all the way through. On a planet like that, Gravity would be the same everywhere on its surface. But we don't live on that spherical planet. Hey, hey, are you about to make a flat earth joke down in the comments? I'm here to tell you to just say no to flat earth, kids. The only buzz I get is from real science. We've been to space. I can't believe we even have to do this. First problem is the earth is spinning. Well, actually, that's not a problem. It's kind of a good thing. It keeps half the planet from freezing solid. But it also means Earth isn't spherical. Earth's equator is spinning around at hundreds of meters per second. And when a round object spins, it bulges perpendicular to the axis of rotation. The physics of why this happens, it's not exactly simple, but it's something you probably intuitively understand. Earth is actually ever so slightly squished and fatter near the equator. Plus, someone standing at the equator feels an apparent force pushing them away from the center of the Earth, just like one of those spinning carnival rides. Gravity gets weaker with distance, so being a bit farther from the center of the Earth, plus that small centrifugal pull, makes gravity at the equator about, drum roll please, 0.5% weaker than at the poles. But this bulgy, ellipsoid Earth isn't the whole story either. You see, Earth isn't like a smooth chocolate cake. It's more like a brownie with nuts. Our planet has lumps and chunks with different densities that make gravity at the surface a little different all over. For example, the crust beneath Iceland and the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is more dense than in the Indian Ocean, which means more mass, which means stronger gravity in the North Atlantic. When you take into account the actual distribution of matter in the Earth, gravity where you are may be higher or lower, depending on the kind of rock and the crust beneath your feet, or if you're over water, even once in the mantle below. There's a lot to take into account. So the real Earth is a squished, spinning, lumpy, irregular blob with uneven gravity. But we need precision measurements of these gravity differences to keep super sensitive technology like GPS working right. Now we could go around and weigh something on a scale everywhere, but that's a lot of work. 
scientists have a way cooler method. One NASA mission uses two identical satellites following each other on the same orbits. As the first satellite passes over a spot with higher gravity, its orbit speeds up and the two satellites pull apart. When the second satellite passes over that high gravity spot, it also speeds up and closes the distance. But if the leading satellite passes over a spot with low gravity, it slows down and the second satellite catches up a bit before passing over the slow spot itself. Now, if this sounds like a never ending game of cat and mouse, NASA agrees. They even named the satellites Tom and Jerry. Scientists are able to measure the distance between these satellites to the width of a human hair in order to reconstruct a gravity map of our entire planet. We've mapped differences as small as 0.001% in Earth's gravity. These maps show how places like the Himalayas, Andes, Indonesia, all have slightly stronger gravity, while areas like the Hudson Bay or the Indian Ocean have slightly weaker gravity. So let's go back to our question from the beginning. Putting all of this together, where on Earth would you, or a kilogram of feathers or steel, weigh the most? at a spot in the ocean near northern Russia. The effect of Earth's rotation, making gravity strongest near the North Pole, combined with some especially dense crust, puts point heavy right there. And where on Earth do you weigh the least? If you guess the equator, you're close. It's Huascaran, a Peruvian mountain that's just south of Earth's middle. Higher altitude combined with the bulge creates the weakest gravity anywhere on the planet. But the effect is pretty small. If you dropped a ball on top of the Peruvian mountain, it would only hit the ground 1.6 milliseconds later than it would at point heavy. And if you took the same bathroom scale to both places, a 70 kilogram person would only see about a half kilogram difference, even though kilograms aren't a measure of weight like we already talked about. If you're looking to shed some weight thanks to a technicality of physics, I mean, it certainly wouldn't hurt to try scaling a mountain. At least you'd burn some calories on your way up. Stay curious. A big thank you to CuriosityStream for supporting PBS Digital Studios. What is CuriosityStream? It is a subscription streaming service that offers documentaries and nonfiction titles from a variety of filmmakers. And their collection features a bunch of CuriosityStream originals. If you enjoyed this massively cool trip, you should check out this original series from CuriosityStream, where the late great astrophysicist Stephen Hawking takes you on a tour of his favorite places in the universe and explains how they got the way they are. It's heavy in a whole different way. You can learn more at curiositystream.com smart.